Welcome to the Rock and Review. I'm thrilled to have on one of the biggest names in country music uh, parody songs. And I'm sure you know I love NASCAR, and he's been on Billboard. He's toured with Shania Twain, so many of the greats. He's back on tour in 2019, coming out of retirement, Cletus T. Judd. Yep, got a little bit behind on that child support, <laughs> so... Uh... <laughs> had jumped back. No, I'm just kidding. No, not not really. But it is good to be back doing it again for sure. Well, you know, and you and I were talking before we came down to the studio. And what I always enjoyed about your songs was you could still kind of tell what song it was originally, but you had so much fun with the lyrics. Man, you know, we always tried to make the make the record sound like the original record, except you know, lyrically, of course, uh, we always changed. And even when we did them, you know, I don't act like I'm doing rocket science here, but you know, we always tried to make each line of each song sound as close to the original as right. we could and and I think that's what you know the biggest amount you know it's easy to make you laugh you, let's say I, it's really hard to make hundreds of thousands laugh. You but, know? you know, you did very well with it. I mean, you look at all we your did. albums, you know, and, and I want to bring up, too, a lot of our viewers may not know, you know, how you kind of got started in this to where, you know, you were you were kind of working on a professional basketball angle. Well, I played basketball, you know, in high school and played a year in college. And, of course, I couldn't jump over a on Kingston scholarship. Spring. Well, I couldn't jump over a <laughs> Kingston Springs phone book. But, uh, you know, I still love to play. And, of course, then I, you know, had some tough times early on, you know, had battled some addiction things and and was so thankful, you know, 14 years uh, clean from that, that ordeal. But, yeah, that's what I'm most proud of. But, you know, just uh, when I moved here, man, you know, I, I, I really didn't have much hope. I didn't know exactly, you know, what was going to happen. Mom sent me here in an old beat-up pickup truck. And for about three years, I, I really struggled. It, really? it was hard. You know, uh, I would go down and take, uh, sl I would sleep over the Donaldson Pike parking lot near the Ruby Tuesdays because those big lights were over there in that parking lot. Right. So I wasn't too afraid to, to sleep there. And I'd get up the next morning, I'd go take a shower at the YMCA. And then I would run up and down Music Row and try to get somebody to listen to me and hear me. And uh, quick story, when the ice storm came through here yeah. in, in 1994, I think, uh, I was going down uh, 440 over to White Bridge Road, and I was scraping my windshield with a Mark Chestnut CD. I didn't have, I didn't have defrost in the car, and uh, I got frostbite on this hand, and oh I almost gosh. lost these three fingers right here. And so one Sunday night, I called my mom, and I said, Mom, I can't do it. I've, I've had enough. you got to come and get me. This is, I'm hungry. I don't have no new clothes. I, I just want to come home. And she said, Are you sure? And I said, come and get me. And as we were talking in my right ear, I heard on a little transistor radio, I heard a song Tim McGraw was singing called They're My Indian, uh, Indian Outlaw. You know, and I, as he was singing Indian Outlaw, I started humming along, They're My Indian In-Laws, came to visit me in my squall. And I thought, Mom, I got to call you back. And she said, well, am I coming to get you? And I said, I'll call you back. <laughs> And I hung up, me and my buddy Bruce Birch uh, wrote that song over the phone that night. Two weeks later, we recorded it for $150, and about a month later, it was on 300 radio stations. And, and I still uh, love that song. And the rest It's just is when you hear history. you know, and that's a great thing I think about your songs, that you know the original, but when I hear your songs, Cletus, it always makes me laugh. Well, that's the, that's the key, you know, you want to... You want, you know, and it's all lighthearted fun, but, you know, Toby said one time, you know, you should see how hard, you know, he works at playing a fool because it is hard work. You oh, know, yeah. Just, you know, some of it comes natural, but, you know, as far as the songwriting and all that, you know, it's uh, it's tough. you got to be clever. To, well, to and, and also, Cletus, I want to bring this up, you know, for our viewers to where, I mean, you've earned it, man. I mean, you, you yeah. came here to Nashville like so many people do. You stuck it out. And you made it work. And, and now even, you know, with the new tour coming up this year for 2019 and a new album coming out. But also you've got your radio show going. Do I uh, do morning radio with uh, with iHeart in, in Huntington, West Virginia. They're they're awesome to, to let me, you know, for now, do both. You know, uh, I do morning radio. Then we tour on the weekends and I go right back at it. And, and sometimes, you know, it, it, it gets tiring. But, you know, I also thank my blessings that I'm, a, I'm able to do it right. again. And I'll, I'll do both till I can't do both anymore that I'll have to make a decision on, on what to well, do. Well, you know, and, and like we were talking to, Cleo, before we came down to the studio, you're able to do it your way now. You're a family man. You like to spend the family time with the kids and everything else. But also, you're an artist, a very creative and funny artist. And yeah. I think, you know, in this day and age, I think always, we need the funny songs. Like you and I were talking about, like, Ray Stevens and some of the other greats over the years. And 
I think we need that in song and in culture. Well, I hope so. You know, when I retired for a while uh, and probably would have never came back had it not have been for Ray Stevens. You know, Ray called or his folks did and asked me to do a show with him in Renfro Valley, Kentucky. Yeah. And uh, I said, man, I just don't know if I got the confidence no more. I, you know, I just don't know if I'm if I'm worthy. You know, Ray Stevens is my idol, so I don't know if I'm worthy. And so I went and done it, and uh, after the show, I came off stage, and Ray said, now, why did you retire again? I said, well, I just didn't feel like I had it in me anymore. And he said, well, about three or 4,000 people just stood up for you. So he said, you may need to go back home and rethink that. And uh, he said, now's an important time in and, uh, and, and the world, and especially where we live at, for humor and people need it. And, right. uh, you know, hopefully along the way, you know, I feel like, I, you know, if I can make somebody laugh for a, for a day or a, for a few minutes, uh, that's, you know, that's important. I think that's just as important, although we don't save lives. I think it's just as important as a doctor or a, a school teacher because, you know, you've got to give people that break and that outlet to laugh a little bit. And, and to be able to do that with you and also to have Ray Stevens going, you need to get back out on the road. Oh, you I need to start doing this again. Uh, yeah, I was so happy when Ray got inducted into the Hall of Fame. You know, oh, I, yeah. I sent him a message. The, the most nervous in my entire career, and I've sung with everybody on records that you can imagine. You know, Shania did one, you know, Joe Diffie and Vince Gill and Winona. So many people helped me. But the most nervous I'd ever been is when I did the Ray Stevens tribute album and Ray came in the studio and we did a duet on the street together right and I, I, I left the studio I went outside I, I told my Chris Clark my producer I said hell I, I can't stay in there and watch this I'm too nervous I mean it was awful <laughs> But I eventually went back in, and Ray and I became great friends. And I texted him a few days ago and said, man, congratulations. I said, you were my hero then. You're my hero now. And he texts back, now, who is this? Uh, <laughs> with an LOL. And, uh, but, man, I'm, I'm so happy for Ray. Well, and I think it was so incredible that you did that album, too. And I wanted to bring up, too, like in 2016, didn't you write, like, a hit song with Brantley Gilbert also? Uh, we did. We had a, a cut on Brantley's record called Three Feet of Water uh, about when I was, uh, I got the idea when I was baptized in church several years years ago and yeah. right before I went into the to the baptismal pool I was sitting there and all these things that had happened in my life and they were all negative you know the abuse and the drugs and the just had the money and it was just all a lot of negativity and then all of a sudden I just felt this really cool piece come over me that says hey I'm fixing to leave all that in three feet of water and wow. I went in one man came out another and that was a I think that was a little gift God gave me for the struggles and he says hey I'm gonna throw you this bone and make sure you write this to to help other people so uh, Brantley cut it and wrote it with my friend Jeremy Bussey and uh, Jace Hine and Brantley and it was uh, it was uh, a big record for what, sure. What a great song too I mean it's one of those songs I think when you hear it it just hits you. I, I hope so. You know, I was hoping it'd be a single, but, you know, maybe somebody else along the way will uh, will, will cut it again and put it out as a single. Well, now, I want to bring up, too, uh, you know, with your big tour coming up, uh, you know, in 2019, you're out with one of your buddies, and you're going to be playing casinos, festivals, concerts all over yeah. the country this yep. year. Yeah, we'll do a family reunion just wherever you want us to come to. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll play it. But, uh, yeah, with Darren Knight, a.k.a. Southern Mama, who's – you know, my God, everybody in the world knows him. Lord, you go on the Internet, and it's just uh, his character, that Southern Mama thing, just resonates so much. With well, and I've heard rumors you guys are selling out venues already, so if people want tickets yeah, and you're crazy. coming to town, they need to get a ticket yeah, early. Yeah, if, uh, you know, and you can jump on my website or Darren's, you know, there's all, or, uh, there's always uh, a scroller up there that says where we're going to be at. You know, like I said, a lot of casinos, and, and the crowds are just, just crazy. It's uh, it's Because I'm telling you, I did some there towards the end of my career that, you could have shot a shotgun off in that venue and wouldn't have hit nobody. And uh, so uh, it's, it's the right time, I think, for sure. I, th I think the, uh, the audience, I think everybody has missed you. And, the, and they've missed and the humor because nobody else is doing it. I, I, I hope so. You know, the reception, like I told you, we're back there. You know, it's, it's definitely harder the second time. Uh, not monetarily because, right. you know, kind of I'm okay there. But it's just, you know, you never know the acceptance. When I did the first video, the... Uh, up down video weights going up down a few oh months my ago gosh. when that was I, so funny and i we, re, we did it on our own we sent it to cmt and you know cmt was my home for so long they were right. so good to me and i'm thinking i don't know if they're going to take me back me on my time maybe it came and went and so for weeks i mean literally a couple of weeks i checked my email every 30 <laughs> minutes come on leslie come on come leslie on, CMT. and finally one saturday morning i opened up my my phone and there was a uh, an email there that had fram leslie 
and I just lost it. I told Amanda, my wife, my kids were there. I said, I can't open it. I, I cannot <laughs> open it because I didn't know what she was going to say. Right. And Amanda said, look, there's nothing in that email one way or the other that's going to change our life. It's, right. you know, you got a great family. We got a home. So just open it. And if it's a pass, we go eat breakfast. And if it's not a pass, we're still going to eat breakfast. Right. And I opened it up and Leslie said, hey, welcome back. Funnier than ever. You're still a genius and uh, welcome home. You've been gone too long. <sighs> Man, me and my kids screamed and yelled and, and hollered. and uh, it's, it's such a fun video. And, and yeah. I think, you know, a lot of us are at that age to where our weight does go oh, up, look, down, up. Know, it's, it's all the time. <laughs> then, you know, we did the Gotta Pee video. And then, then we did something that never happened in my entire career. We did a serious thing with a, a friend of mine with, with my daughter. And both uh, the, the Gotta Pee video and that serious thing was on the, the – uh, top 12 countdown you know it made it in the top 12 fan voted so right. that just kind of makes you feel like well, it speaks doing to what right you're doing thing. i hope so and, and you're gonna have a new album coming out this year too yep working on it just as as we feel the need you know up down with the the up down song will be on it gotta pee got one called he's just a racist which is about a nascar guy who loves nothing but racing. He don't like twist. softball, football. He hates it all except racing. That's right. it. So that's going to be a fun one. And uh, a couple other ones, one called Man Crush, which is a parody of Girl Crush. Uh, my wife, because I'm a Tiger Woods fanatic, you know, right. and uh, my wife told me the other day, she said, my God, you got a man crush for that dude. And I said, I got to do that one. So uh, <laughs> that one will be done. And, and a few more. And it's kind of nice to be able to do them leisurely and not right. have the pressure to no. Like it was back in the day, you know, when you got the the, the big cheeses looking over your shoulder, right. and, and now you got the, now you got the big support group of the family. I do, yeah, yeah. And they, the, the, every time I hit the road, I used to think, man, I just don't know if Caitlin wants me to go. And now it's like, take care. How long are you going this time? <laughs> yeah, take you a month, Dad. We're good. Send the money. Yeah, just send the child support. We're good. So. Uh, but everybody come out and see us. It is a lot of fun, and hopefully we can bring some joy to your life and, uh, and aggravate you. Well, I'll tell you what. Be sure and, and find him on the web, Cletus T. Judd. He's on social media, Facebook, everywhere else. You want to look and see where he's playing at in your area because you don't want to miss this show. It's going to be a great show, and hopefully that new album rolls out this year again, too. Absolutely. It'll be and uh, it's going to be a lot of laughs and a lot of fun. I hope so. Cletus T. Judd. Thank you, buddy. Thanks for watching The Rock Interview.